wine lover Monty Walden has risked everything to pursue a dream in a beautiful part of southwest France. This is a great diet, by the way, potato and bread and eggs. He's living out his ambition to produce 6,000 bottles of delicious, light, fruity red wine. Wow, this is stunning. It's a dream come true. After months of hard work, his Carignan grapes have been harvested. But the risky stage of winemaking is underway. You know, just because the grapes are in the tank doesn't mean all the work is done, because if I make one mistake during winemaking, and the wine turns to vinegar, that would be my absolute worst nightmare. His vineyard assistant, Lindsay, has gone back to the UK. Her job is over until the wine is ready for bottling. Well, I felt sad today. I've had a little cry because I felt that it was a bit of the end of an era for me. This week, Monty finds out if he'll hit his target of making 6,000 bottles of wine. I keep looking at the name and think, have they spelled my name right? <laughs> he faces the tough reality of selling. My wine better be really good because there's a hell of a lot of competition about. And has his wine judged by an exclusive top London restaurant? I've always struggled with Carignan in the past, so I'm, I'm <laughs> very interested to, no, to try don't. this. It's autumn in the Pyrenees. Charming. Monty's been busy entertaining a visitor from the UK. Bill Baker is an influential restaurant wine buyer who's in the region on a tasting expedition. Uh, Bill, this is um, Eric, who... Ça va? Uh, this is his uh, winery. Bill has sampled Monty's still unfinished wine and given him a pat on the back. That is a very delicious drink. Très bon. Merci. Delighted with Bill's reaction, Monty has booked the top table at one of the region's premier restaurants. Try that. Cocktail onions, very fine. Let's have some more wine. Le souffle de grand manier, s'il vous plaît. Jolly good. Monty's buttering up Bill in the hope he'll set up some key tastings back in the UK for his biodynamic wine. I did, yes, Bill. Yeah, yeah yes. Enough money? Uh, just about. Really? I've, I've mortgaged my dog, in fact. Dog's a complete nightmare. Monty might be chipper, but ahead he still has several crucial stages of winemaking to get right. Merci, madame. Au revoir. If he uh, f it up, it's going to be a big blot on the old landscape, isn't it? <laughs> As winter sets in, Monty is concentrating on the tricky winemaking process. There we go. I mean, it's gone from uh, sweet, fruity grape juice to a sort of adolescent wine now. Not quite a grown up yet, but it's getting there. The wine has been fermenting for a month. Monty has pumped the juice into another tank and will now press the remaining grapes. Obviously, there's still lots of juice in there. Look, if we don't press the, this, uh, these bunches, we're going to lose all this potential wine, see? He's borrowing Eric's nice new pressing machine. So now, there we go. Oh, so nice. This is so fruity. As the grapes are squeezed, the skins give up their tannins. This gives the wine its complexity and character. You know, we're starting to get a little bit more astringency. It's not astringent, but a little bit more... a bit more kind of mouth-puckering uh, wine. But Monty has to judge exactly when to stop the machine, or his wine could be ruined. So far, so good. But it's not over yet. Now Monty has to sort out the most costly part of his project. Monty's girlfriend and accountant, Silvana, has arrived in France 
to take hold of the financial reins at a critical time. With 70% of his production costs going on packaging alone, Monty has had to shell out £2,000 for the design and printing of his labels. The hard part is the marketing, is the packaging, it's choosing the bottle, getting the right bottle, the right label, the right capsule, the right look for your wine. Okay, you... Detail is everything. And as far as corks go, well, Monty has chosen natural ones, made using the latest technology, which will cost 10p each. But when they turn up at the bottle factory, Monty drops a bombshell. He has the mad idea of sticking red wine in a clear glass bottle. You know, doing something a bit different might be quite nice, um, but also it's partly to try and be slightly environmentally aware, because in England we buy a lot of wine and there's a lot of green glass that just gets chucked away, really. Um, and th with this clearer glass, there is a market for recycled clear glass. No, it's not joli. Au niveau look, au niveau look, it's not joli. He said it's good for what he said. Um, affreux means he said terrible, mate. Mm. So it's going to absolute pants. Your wine will be the color will change so quickly. You think so? Yeah, because it's not there is no protection. Mm. What do you mean the the sun will burn the wine a bit? So Monty buckles and sticks with tradition, choosing a Burgundy-style green bottle. So basically, it's anywhere between less than 20p to around about 40p a bottle. Four months after the harvest, the wine has finished fermenting and is now in its final maturing phase. Are you excited about your wine? It's nice, huh? Nice, huh? It's bright. That's what I like. It's made in a style to be drunk, kind of young, and it's got that vibrancy that I, I wanted. Um, because the sooner it's sold, the sooner I get money back, basically. So at the moment, all my money, all my money's tied up in, in this tank, so. Monty must start planning how to sell the wine. So far, it's been spend, spend, spend. Now, he needs some income. The nearby town of Perpignan is hosting the biggest organic wine fair in Europe and it attracts winemakers and buyers from all over the world. This fair has more than doubled in size in the last five years, and that's great because it demonstrates that biodynamics and organics are commercially viable. The flip side is, is there's now a hell of a lot of competition out there. Monty's wine isn't yet ready to exhibit, and he's unknown. He's come here to talk up his wine and generate some interest. By the end of the day, Monty successfully sets up a meeting with a UK wine buyer. Later at the winery, Monty is on tenterhooks. Well, I'm a bit stressed because uh, there's a wine bar coming. He's going to taste the wine. It's the first time the wine will have been tasted ready, if you like. Obviously, I hope he's going to buy it. Um, you know, what I don't want him to do is try and beat me down on price because I can't afford to do that. I'm as low as I can possibly go. The man Monty's waiting for Hi. represents a well-established importer who distributes quality Thanks. wine throughout the UK. Um, if you just carry straight on down, yep. I know you're a busy guy today. Working way up. Alistair Not Marshall bad. has the power to make or break Monty's ambition to be a successful winemaker. If he gives the wine a thumbs down, it's the end of the road for our man, Monty. Fifteen months after Monty Walden moved to the south of France, his journey to become a winemaker is close to finishing. His biodynamic wine is ready, and today he's about to find out if it's good enough for the UK market. Alastair Marshall, a top importer, is about to put Monty out of his misery. Young, fruity, juicy, actually. I like it. I mean, it's got, it's got a real character. Nice, um, slightly rustic feel to it. And this isn't a grand, serious wine, but it's a lovely, sort of uh, friendly 
juicy sort of wine, so, um, and I like that. And it's, it's, not, uh, it's not got any great pretensions here. He's, he's not set out to make Latour, he's set out to make a nice drink. I'll go for that. So how, how the, vine the wine's is obviously bad. rather good. Yeah, so but to break even, Monty has to flog it for at least three euros fifty a bottle. That's about two pounds fifty back home. If I sell it for lower than three fifty, I'm stuffed. I can't go lower than three fifty. Three euros fifty is that? Well, yeah. Is that? Well, three fifty would actually place it at about seven ninety nine. So that would that that's fair. And uh, you know, if we get you to work your little butt off for the rest. This is a, this is a hand sell. People aren't just going to rush in and say, ah, Carignan, from Monty. Well, so no, we're going to have to tell them about it. So you, do you want me to come over and, and ah, yabber yes. at people? Absolutely. Fred, you're going to have to sing for your supper on this one. Carignan gets... Alistair buying it is one thing, but now the next battle is to convince his customers to buy it from him. When they go into the wine shop, they bought a bottle, one bottle of my wine, I want them to go back and buy another one, and another one, and another one, because that way this project will grow. So, it uh, could be the start of a beautiful thing. The deal may well be struck, but Alastair is expecting Monty to help with the marketing. Until he bottles the wine, Monty has no idea if he'll make a profit. Dawn breaks on the day Monty's long been waiting for. This lorry contains everything needed to bottle, cork, and label Monty's biodynamic wine. Oh, it's really exciting. I mean, uh, looks like the kind of end of the road is being reached. Still haven't quite got my head around the fact that I'm going to see all these bottles with my name on them going along this uh, chain. This guy, a roll. Lindsay is back to see the results of her hard work finally put into bottles. Well, I'm feeling happy, uh, but I'm also feeling a little bit sad because, um, you know, the 18 months have not more or less come to an end now. This is sort of the last, the last bit we've got to do. So mixed emotions, really. It's very good, the wine. <laughs> what do you think? You like it? I do. I really like that. Mm, do you? Yeah. It's a big day, isn't it? Yeah, it's a big day. It's a very nice and wild, huh? This is it. The premier bottle of Monty's French Red comes off the production line. That looks really impressive. You like it? I do, do you? It's pretty smart. It's really good. Look, there you go. See the bat? Well, I must have seen about 2,000 bottles go past with my name on it, and I still can't believe that it is my wine inside. Anyway, it's happening, and it's fantastic. Yeah, dream come true. Today marks a high point in Monty and Lindsay's winemaking adventure. It's uh, 18 months of, uh, you know, hard work for both of us, and um, it's a fantastic moment. Well, I can't believe it, really. It's sort of, I'm, I'm in a little bit in shock. But to get to this point, it's been a folly-fueled journey. Not only has Monty struggled to convert city girl Lindsay, I'm going to go under my nails and everything. I don't care about that. Oh, his feet are warm. Oh. But they've had to convince the locals the biodynamics wasn't all bonkers. Uh, we don't. <laughs> oh, dear. Well, hopefully, he's not going to think I'm a complete nutter. Then there was the roller coaster relationship. That's not digging a hole, that's scraping a hole like a dog, isn't it? Well, I wasn't aware that we had such a problem as we have. <laughs> not forgetting storms. The odd wild boar. Well, that's every wine grower's worst nightmare. Financial worry. And the backbreaking work. Doctor said, in no way are you using a back spray. It's hard to believe they've actually made it. That's it. Finish. Finally, the vat runs dry and the last bottle rolls off the bottling line. 
Has Monty reached his break-even point of 6,000 bottles? <laughs> 6,547. Not bad. So I think I've got to confirm it was Silvana, but um, this better than I thought it was going to be, actually. Why? Are you happy? Very happy, Very Eric. happy. Very, yes. very happy, Eric, yeah. Yes. The French locals can't believe it. The Englishman seems to have pulled it off. But what will they make of the biodynamic contents? The villagers can be relied upon for their honest opinion. After all, they've been making wine here from the same grapes for generations. Very big moment. This is, this is going to be either they'll, they'll not say they'll love me forever in the village, but they'll welcome me back or they'll banish me to the, I don't know where, banish me to Tuscany. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Cheers. C'est bon? Ouais. C'est un du sud, hein? C'est super. No, no. <laughs> it's a wine that's made with love and, and tastes very natural. That's a thumbs up. Serge, le, le verdict? Très bon. 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 Monty can hold his head high in French company, and Lindsay can't quite believe they've pulled it off. Today, it's felt surreal, because it's felt like it's never going to happen. And to actually watch it go in the bottles today was really good. <laughs> well, I'm really thrilled that the wine's gone down so well tonight. I wasn't expecting that, really, but so far, really big thumbs up. The next big challenge, of course, is to sell it. Lindsay and Monty just pray the wine goes down well with the great British public. Hope to God he gets it there in one piece. All 6,547 bottles safely reach British soil. But Monty has committed to a deal. He has agreed to personally promote the wine to help boost sales. His first port of call is an upmarket offie popular with London's well heeled. The millionaire owner Cliff is a tough businessman who won't have any old rubbish plonk sat on his shelves. Certified organic. Should give it a whirl. Yeah, let's do it. Cliff's clients range from supermarkets to supermodels. Perfect. <laughs> nice colour. Very good. Lovely, very nice ripe fruit. Sweet. Uh, good body, lovely colour, good nose. Excellent. I think you've got a deal, Monty. I think, you know, we'll definitely uh, we'll put it in the shop and uh, see how the customers like it. They're okay. the ultimate judge. Bye, Cliff. Monty secures an order for 25 cases. That's the result. Uh, you know, he buys millions of litres of, of wine every year and he's going to take mine. So I'm really, really pleased. Monty's next contact might not be such a pushover. This man chooses all the wines for an exclusive London restaurant. Monty is going for broke and putting his wine up for tasting. I'm a little bit apprehensive in the sense that they might think I'm completely mad, this whole biodynamic moon thing. Um, but if, you know, the proof ultimately is in the pudding and if they like this wine, if John, a master wine, gives it the thumbs up, it will mean everything to me. So, wish me luck, OK? John Atkinson is only one of 264 masters of wine worldwide, which means this man's business is to know the good from the bad and the ugly. My wine's not going to go in there, is it? All these famous names. Yeah, we like to display all the wines. How much does a bottle of Petrus 82 go for, John? £4,000. <laughs> I don't think my wine's in that league, is it? Come on, let's go and taste it. <laughs> If that wasn't enough for Monty's nerves, three top sommeliers will also judge his wine. It'd be interesting because, um, with a little bit of prejudice, I've always struggled with Carignan in the past, so I'm, 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 I'm very interested to, to try this. Put Monty out of his misery. Yeah. It's a huge gamble, 
If Monty's wine gets accepted, he will have achieved something even experienced winemakers can only imagine. It could secure his long-term future and fortune. If rejected, his dreams to be a serious winemaker are over. So, John, what do you, what's the verdict? Yeah, as I said, I had my reservations about um, carrying on. Um, I find this really good. It's, it's, it's succulent, um, it's warming, and it has that kind of savour. It's, it's in the way that French wine can be, almost like food, and it does, it, it does seem to have that sustaining power. I like it. It's fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm still quite shocked that John likes the wine. <laughs> <laughs> it's really good. Really, really good. Well done. I mean it. Yeah. For him to give this wine, it's little wine from France, the thumbs up, is, is a massive thing for me, really. It's excellent. Very, very good. Great. Yeah. We'll take Fine. it. Yes. Please. Brilliant. With 20 cases sold here, it looks like Monty's new career as a winemaker is assured. Tonight, Monty's organised a big party to show off his wine to friends and share the limelight with Silvana. They have exciting news about their future. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Silvana's expecting a baby. I think it's mine. I think it's yours. <laughs> Thanks for that, Monty. That's a very nice thing to say. So the baby's going to arrive for next year's harvest, right, kind of slap bang in the middle of next year's harvest. So in terms of planning, it wasn't, you know, I think I got my lunar cycles mixed up when we were, you know, anyway. Um, but we'll just have to cross that bridge when we come to it. But, I'm, you know, I'm really happy. Monty has plans to risk even more to expand his wine business worldwide. But now he has a family to support. Life is going to get a whole lot more complicated. Well, this year's been the best year of my life. No doubt in my mind about that. And the good news is, it's going to continue. I mean, when I started this project, I was definitely a wine writer, pure and simple. Now I'm a winemaker, and it's going to stay that way. And it's not just um, the fact that I've got my own wine and my own glass. It's, you know, the fact that, you know, other aspects of my life are... It's just everything's kind of... I've just gained clarity, I suppose, is, is how I could describe it. And Monty isn't the only one who has benefited from the whole experience. It's made me look at wine in a completely different way. In what way? What, the, the amount of work that goes into it? Or? Yeah, and just not like before, I'd probably have a, have a glass of wine. If it was awful, I'd carry on drinking it. Well, I don't anymore. So you basically become a wine snob? I have. Cheers, Albie. Cheers. To the future. Yeah. Monty has achieved what he's set out to do. He's made decent wine, and to top it all, he's made a profit. I'm reliably informed by my accountant that I've made a profit of 18 pounds and 30 pence. And my target is to convert that into a million. If Monty's inspired you to live your dream and move abroad, go to channel4.com slash four homes to find out how you can make it happen. Narcolepsy, a rare and misunderstood condition for sufferers who fall asleep anytime, anyplace, anywhere. Cutting Edge goes to the States for a clearer understanding next. <laughs>